Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze. And we're excited to bring you more coverage from this year's Slam Dance Film Festival, the 2021 official selection series. And we have uh, an amazing group of filmmaker and talent here with us today for their film, A Black Rift Begins to Yawn. Uh, it's a feature film selected for this year. And we have uh, the two leads, Sarah Lynch and Sarah McDonald, and director Matthew Wade. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thanks Thank for having us. Nice. Thanks for coming on the show today. We're excited to talk about this film. I, I just checked it out this morning. Uh, tell, tell the audiences a little bit about the film and like a brief synopsis. What, what can they expect from it? Um, it's pretty much like a tone poem, dream ass film about two women that are sort of working on a project um, that they've picked up from their deceased professor and as they kind of self-isolate for an undetermined period of time, uh, their sense of like reality, identity, the amount of time they've been together, and even their individuality sort of start to become questioned and blurred. And it's uh, kind of about identity when you are with one other person for a long time in an isolated environment. Um, not made timely on purpose at all. We shot this in 2013. Yeah. So. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, so for, for both of the leads, Sarah and Sarah, um, and Sarah Tops, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your reaction when you first saw the script and you, and you were uh, reading about the project. Uh, well, we were kind of started with a smaller scale project at first. And then, um, I mean, I live with Matt because we're married. So I was kind of there the whole process as it slowly evolved into more of this mystery slanted narrative about isolation. Um, I was super stoked when we got the script. Uh, we were kind of already on the same page with how we were gonna do the art design and approach some of the locations. And we hadn't made a feature for several years. So just super stoked to take on that endeavor again. Nice, nice. And it was uh, completely caught off guard <laughs> yeah. because Matt and Sarah had approached me and asked me to be in a film. And I said, sure, why not? And so in my head, I should have asked more questions. In my head, I thought, maybe I'll get a line. This will be really fun. And then Matt just kept, you know, staying in touch and telling me the updates on the film. And I was like, wow, he's, he's very thorough. Okay, great. And then he gave me a copy of the script and it wasn't until that point that I realized that I was a lead role. So I was like, okay, I <laughs> agreed to do this. So let's go. A star is born and there you go. <laughs> Maybe it steps to huge leaps. Hey, listen, that, that's great. That's great. You got a, a beautiful feature film. I thought that it was very captivating, especially, and I, I have to ask about the colors. It is so vibrant. How was your experience since both of you were, were, were working on it together um, in, in the post-production world of it? Because it's just so cotton candy rainbow. I loved looking at it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, your coloring. Yeah, um, I'm glad you liked Yeah, I'm always like, I'm just a... I'm kind of a color neon fanatic. I kind of always have been. All my artwork is very brightly colored and I just really like playing with that. Um, certainly we spent a lot of time in pre-production. She was the production designer as well. So we spent a long time going to every thrift store like in driving distance going through every little aisle to find like particular colors or things that we wanted or particular objects that we had in mind. So the whole thing was really meticulous in that we really had no wasted coverage. Uh, Lila Stryker, the director of photography, it was also her first film that she's ever shot. Um, but she's a, an amazing photographer. So that's why I brought her on board. And we mapped the thing out and pretty much had like, we knew kind of, this frame's gonna be this color dominant, this frame's gonna be this color dominant, and we pretty much had it mapped out, and we shot pretty much what you see. I mean, we didn't have, we didn't shoot inserts that we didn't use, so we were meticulous about that so that we could really play with the color, um, play with the effects and stuff like that afterwards, and really yeah. just 
have that be, we put ourselves in a position where we had to make that work and not rely on B footage and other kinds of things like that. So For we've sure. been very meticulous knowing we wanted this to go look a very particular way, which was just going to take us for sure, time to do so. sound a particular way. The score, the composing, was spooky and ethereal. Who, who's the, the composer? That that was that was ooh, spooky. <laughs> uh, I'm the I'm composer. <laughs> uh, so production designer, director, <laughs> composer, leads. Yeah, Lindy, I love so, it. So, yeah, there were uh, seven people that touched this film ever, um, including the cast and crew. There were seven of us. That was the entire group. Um, so yeah, it was very, it was in our hands for a long time, which is why it took us a long time to make it. But because uh, I also edited it, I also did all the color grading and I did the score. And then my buddy Jacob Kinch did all the mixing of the score, did all the sound design. Yeah. Um, and we just bounced files back and forth for like two years while we were working yeah. on, I wrote, I wrote 10 or 11 scores before I, landed on this one that I actually liked. Wow. So it was a lot of just back and forth and feeling out like, do we like this? Does this feel right? Switching it out, trying it again. This is this film is like a child of a collective seven person family, which is awesome. It's really intimate. Yeah. You guys all grew it together, which which is sweet. So uh, next question for for Sarah Tops, Miss Sarah McDonald. Uh, since this is your first uh, lead role in a feature film, how did, how was your experience? How what what have you learned while working with uh, with a director, and how have you seen yourself grow after uh, you know rocking out this feature? Uh, well, I loved every second of it, even though it was utterly exhausting some days. Uh, when we were filming in the cabin, I think we filmed until five and then took an hour nap and then started again uh, to catch some sunrise shots in the morning. And we did that for five days straight. So by the fifth day, it kind of was its own dream sequence. Um, but I loved it. I uh, have almost no knowledge of film whatsoever. So the whole thing, it was captivating to me of uh, using atmosphere, you know, for lighting or just watching how much effort it takes to set up the lighting and the sound. I mean, every single second, I was just, you know, sort of watching, uh, I only worked with five others. So I was watching all five kind of uh, man their craft and yeah. it was wonderful. So nice. I, I told, I would love to work on any other project with him ever again, especially if I get to quote unquote, lose my mind in a scene. <laughs> so. Yeah. Very psychedelic. I feel like this would go uh, awesome with some hallucinogens or something to really take it, you know, really take you on a nice <laughs> radio journey. Just trip out, which was awesome. It reminded me of like, um, uh, what was Elijah Woods, a Spectre vision type film, with just how colorful it was like uh, cool. color out of space. But it was just, I, I was super into it. And I, she, she touched on a very interesting uh, 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 thought. Did you shoot almost a, like a lot of these visuals, like landscape shots at magic hour, like every day? Because I felt like every time it was going into a new frame with the transition, it was like, this is a magic hour. This is magic hour. Did that happen? Yeah, I had, a, I had various timers on my phone that were like, like, so I had set a bunch of alarms that I had repeat every day. And one of them was like, Sunset is going to start in 15 minutes. So that if we were in the middle of a scene, I knew I could like break the camera and stuff away, and that Lila or I or Chaz Gentry, our gaffer, could go like shoot a particular thing we wanted. So yeah, we kind of had all that mapped out so that when the light was changing, we could jump over and do it in like one of these inserts that we wanted. So yeah, yeah, all that was pretty planned out while we were there. Nice. I had uh, like Blade Runner vibes when I was watching it. There's one shot that you guys had where it was like mm. lowering onto a building with like two uh, like lights yeah. up on the top. Of it. Yeah, I said that looks straight out of Blade Runner, with, especially with the score on top of it. So if that's what you were shooting for, we nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, Subconscious, so probably. Yeah. What's up? Subconsciously, probably. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Very spooky. Very spooky, but very fun and 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 science fictiony. Uh, 
So you find a journal in this in this cabin, and then you're going through the processes of something that was left over. Uh, can you dive a little bit more into that? Like there was one scene that I was really intrigued with, which looked like a demonic possession, where uh, where Sarah, you were looking up at, uh, at the camera, and it was just it fixated on your right. eyes, and I was looking on, seeing what was happening. It looked like you were about to kill your partner. Do you want to reflect on that scene? I thought that was pretty pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, it looks like it definitely came across that way. So that is awesome. We were really playing with this idea of what happens when you are alone in one space with so little exposure to other humans or another sensory environment. Your brain does crazy things. Sometimes you feel like someone else is like drifting in and out of your body or sometimes you aren't sure who you are or like what time or place you're in and I, I'm glad that came across. It was very much this exploration of, I do not know what is real, what's not real, what I may have dreamed and what I actually experienced and what order these events happened in. So it's just this sort of like brain breaking <laughs> moment that's happening. Yeah, I'd say that was a, a mission success. It came across as that. That's the way I interpreted it. And I thought that it was, you know, visually wonderful. So uh, congratulations on your acceptance to Slam Dance this year as an official selection. The film A Black Rift Begins to Yawn will be available on the platform. Uh, the festival is $10 pass to watch all the movies that you want to check out. And this one was absolutely visually and, and uh, aesthetically stunning. So loved it. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the Slam Dance Film Festival organization in closing? I mean, gosh, thanks for having us. They've been a huge supporter of my stuff since my first short film. So um, uh, when we sent this movie out, we all kind of collectively were like, if any film festival is going to get this, it's going to be Slam Dance. So we're glad yeah. we're glad they were on board too but yeah yeah it's this uh, very serendipitous thing for me too because i haven't been to the slam dance film festival since we screened our first short there and when we were at the festival i remember thinking like oh man i hope we are playing a feature here someday this is the perfect place for one of our feature films and it's, so it's just super exciting to have that happening for us this year Nice, nice. Again, congratulations. Uh, we have lead talent Sarah Lynch and Sarah McDonald, as well as director Matthew Wade. And uh, we thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your film, A Black Rift Begins to Yawn. Is there a website or social media that we can showcase where people can go to check out more about the film? Uh, Skymeltfilm.com. Um, yeah, that's where we have all of our stuff. You can also just we, we kind of pick names that are not going to be confused with other Google things. So if you Google our titles, you should, you should find our stuff too. For sure. We'll have that right down below and oh. uh, yeah, so that they can check it out again, enjoyed it. And congratulations again on slam dance and for, for joining me today on the breeze. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you.